how does the Quran distinguish between those Christians out there and these over here the Western Christians and the Eastern I would like to if I may uh, introduce you to some verses of the Quran so that you'll have a text on which to be able to focus your thought in a at the beginning of the Quran Allah says that he ordered the angels to bow down and prostrate before Adam alayhi salam and they all prostrated except one Iblis or Satan the Lord God is not deficient in the use of language no and he has constructed this sentence in this way so that if you use the wrong methodology you will come to the conclusion logically that since the order was given to the angels and he did not bow down he was an angel maybe now he's a fallen angel but if you use the right methodology of not taking any verse of the Quran in isolation stand alone to derive meaning but rather going to the totality of the book we then learn that uh, angels don't have any choice no when an order is given to an angel the angel must obey but he disobeyed <laughs> it now follows logically therefrom he could not have been an angel and then in yet another part of the Quran we're told that he was not an angel he was a jinn and so we are taught a methodology at the very beginning for the study of the text both the Quran and the Hadith and now I want to take you to the passage that is of supreme importance which is in the fifth chapter of the Quran uh, uh, the disciples had pray, asked Jesus to pray for a table laden with food to come down I think it's called the Last Supper is it? Yeah. a table laden with food to come down and uh, this is the title of that chapter Al Ma'ida the table laden with food and in the 51st verse Allah Most High gives a command and he says oh you who have faith in me do not take such Jews and do not take such Christians as your friends and allies who who themselves are friends and allies of each other but Jews and Christians were never friends and allies of each other and so the Quran is anticipating a time to come when a mysterious alliance between Jews and Christians will be forged a Judeo-Christian alliance when that alliance comes into being you are prohibited from maintaining friendly ties being allies calling them your partners <laughs> prohibited by the Lord God and if you do that in defiance of the Lord God and become their friends and allies of the Judeo-Christian alliance then you no longer belong to us the Muslim world you now belong to them and the Lord God does not provide guidance for a wicked people this is the verse but this is not the way it has normally been explained <laughs> because of the wrong methodology now let me tell you the translation that you normally get 
O oh, you who have faith in the Lord God, do not take the Jews and Christians as your friends and allies. Do not take the Jews and Christians as your friends and allies. They are friends and allies of each other, which is false. Which is false. The Jews and Christians were never friends and allies of each other. Hmm? And so you have a difference now between the wrong methodology and the right methodology. That Judeo-Christian alliance is coming to being. And Russia is not a part of it. That Judeo-Christian alliance is cemented by Zionism. It is a Zionist Judeo-Christian alliance. And it is located there in Western Christianity. And so Islam in the West is that the Quran has prohibited Muslims from maintaining friendly ties and being allies of those people. And uh, our moral philosophy is that this world is a moral order, not a chaotic order. And the truth must prevail. No matter how long it takes, truth must prevail. And so eventually, those who are true Muslims, you will find them cutting off their ties from that Judeo-Christian Zionist world. I now want to take you to another verse of the Quran. This one is also in the fifth chapter, Al-Ma'idah. And it will be somewhere around verse 83, I think. In which the Lord God says, But you will most certainly find in time to come. That those who will have the greatest hostility and hatred and enmity for you would be those who say we are Jews. And of course, using the wrong methodology, you say all Jews. <laughs> That's the wrong methodology. Not all Jews, no. Not all Jews. And then the Quran goes on to say, and now I want to quote the Arabic because the Lord God didn't speak in English. And you will most certainly find in time to come. Akarabahum. Those who will be closest of all to you. Mawaddatan, in love and in friendship. Lilladina amanu, with the Muslims. Walatajidan akrabahum mawaddatan lilladina amanu lilladina in lilladina kalu in nasara. There be those who say, We are Christians. We are Christians. ذلك بأنهم بأن منهم الكسيسين والرهبانة. That is because amongst them there are priests and and monks who live the monastic way of life. وأنهم لا يستكبرون. And they are people who have no arrogance in them. Who have no arrogance in them. Today those who have PhDs in arrogance. reside in Washington and in London and in Jerusalem. They don't know what is humility. Not at all. Who are those Christians then? Obviously, it could not be that one. It has to be this world of Christianity which still has in its heart that love for Jerusalem and which still longs for the return of Jesus, the son of Mary, in person. And which does not, does not oppress. Which will not oppress. Which will join forces with all others who stand up against oppression in the world and seek to liberate the oppressed. That's a worldview that comes out of Islamic eschatology. 
I am of the view that we are now located at that moment in the historical process when that mastermind, that evil mastermind of the end time, the Antichrist, of which Christian, of whom Christians are well aware, I, I don't have to introduce him. In Islam he's called Dajjal. Dajjal because he deceives. Like 1907 I think it was, or 1909 if I'm wrong, please correct me, when Britain and France embraced Russia in an alliance was it 1907? 1907. Embracing Russia in an alliance through the front door. <laughs> and between 1907 and 1913, forging with Russia an even greater embrace by offering to Russia Constantinople. Because that's the heart of the Eastern Orthodox Christian world, Constantinople. After Jerusalem. And so, this is the jar from the front door. It must have taken a lot of time to plan the Bolshevik Revolution. It must have taken a lot of financial planning as well. <laughs> it must have taken a lot of skill in, in uh, bringing about alterations in the economy. And then came that moment when Russia